um, and what we can learn how not to be friends or <laughs> maybe some bits of how to be friends. But the reason I've shown it this morning is not just because I love it, because I do. I used to watch the same episodes twice a day and I think I know every word off by heart, so Amy hates watching it with me. It's my guilty pleasure. Um, but the reason I show it is because I think, and um, certainly when I was growing up, um, or maybe it was just me, but I think that's what people thought friendship looked like. You know, you just hang out with each other, each other's uh, houses or apartments, you just kind of do life together, it's all chilled out. Um, there's, there's maybe times where you end up in a relationship, then you go back to a friendship, everything ends nicely, it's all hunky-dory and friendship's actually quite easy. But I don't think that's actually the case. And then we go to the world now and how the world is today and I think really what we see is people scared of friendship and not wanting to have friends. So I'll have, I'll have some acquaintances, I know them quite well, we get on well, we're kind of friendly, but I won't say they're my close, not close true friends. And then we've got, we've got Facebook uh, friends as well, you know that idea of, well you're my, you're my friend, you're my Facebook friend and you end up with like 800, 900, 2000, 3000 Facebook friends. And, you know, really are the friends, you, sometimes you go somewhere, you meet someone for the first time, or you just see them across the room, oh, I'll make them my Facebook friend, oh, they're actually my friend now, I'll, I'll, I'll add them. But they're not really your friends, are they? So therefore, we're really not going to find any sort of help about what friendship looks like, what friendship is from the world, or anything the world can really offer us. We're going to need to look right into God's word and see it uh, in there. And we're carrying on this series we just started last week, as Josh started us off, called Dust to Dust. Kind of from, from life's beginning to life's end and everything in between. So Josh last week looked at being image bearers uh, of God. And if you didn't catch that, go and listen. It's a fantastic message. And this week we're going to look at the topic of friendship, if you haven't guessed already, uh, by the video. Now, uh, Jamie asked me to speak on this topic. We're going to speak on children, but uh, chose friendship. Partly because it's just not spoken of. I don't think I've ever can remember hearing a sermon on friendship. In all my years of hearing sermons and messages, and when I tried to find some online, there was barely any. There's basically none there, but actually the Bible speaks so much of friendship. Tons. I, I ended up with about 20 passages of the Bible I was looking at, and there's certainly more uh, about friendship, but it's just, I feel it's not really spoken of in, in church. How to be a, a, a friend. Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 and 10 says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil for if they fall one will lift up his fellow but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. So we're made to live um, with others, we're made to live in communion and do life together. I'm not sure where you're at this morning, maybe you are in that category of do you know what I don't need friends, I've got a few acquaintances that'll do me, uh, I'm quite content with that. But hopefully I can show you this morning why the Bible and why we have, the Bible shows us that we have a need for, for friends and for friendship uh, on this true biblical level uh, and what we should and shouldn't look for in uh, friends and friendship too. So this morning, true friendship as God intended it. And, and first this morning I want to, my first point is that we need to choose wisely. Choose wisely. I don't know what kind of friends you've had, I've certainly had and I've got some, some great friends, some really good friends, um, but I've also had some bad ones and I'm sure you can pick out some in your own life too that have been bad friendships. Maybe ones who've let you down, who've betrayed your trust, maybe gossiped about you, maybe hurt you, maybe tried to purposely embarrass you for their own gain. I've certainly had some of those. And then maybe if we're even more honest, we've probably been that kind of friend at some times. We've maybe let someone down maybe hurt someone, maybe gossiped about someone who's supposed to be our friend. So as much as this is about us choosing a friend wisely, it's also about us being the kind of friends that people would choose wisely to be friends with. Let's go to our first scripture, Proverbs 13, verse 20. It says, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Or the NLT puts it, walk with the wise and become wise, associate with fools and get in trouble. And then the message goes even further, become wise by walking with the wise, but hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. So we're called to, to walk uh, with the wise, walk with those that are going um, to bring good into our lives. 
You know, those who are your true friends who are spending time with you and who you spend your time with and around, you're not going to become like them. You're going to act like them. You're going to think like them. No matter what you do, if you spend time with someone, you are going to become like each other. So we need to make sure we're spending time with those that are, are wise and are bringing good into our lives, not bringing bad that's going to bring us down or cause us to be harmed. And in a friendship group as well, you know the saying, the rotten apple spoils the barrel. The idea that if one of uh, the friends in the friendship uh, is, is, is corrupt or bringing bad character, good, bad morals into the group, actually that can corrupt uh, all of you in, in a negative uh, way. So if we're going to resemble each other, we need to choose wisely. Choose the friends that have the characteristics that you want for yourself, for your life, that you want to look like, you want to be. So what else should we uh, avoid then in friends? Well, James 4 talks about avoiding those who are supposedly friends who are gossiping about you or judging you or seek to harm you. They're speaking against you. James 4.11. That they're not your friends. They're the people you don't want to be friends with. Proverbs 22 as well talks about those that are easily hot-tempered, those that easily get angry at, at, at life and at people because they're going to corrupt your character and could potentially make you someone who is easily angered too, hot-tempered. The, the message at the end of verse 25 of chapter 22 puts it as this, don't get infected. Don't get infected by others' hot temper and their character. And then James 4.4, 4, let's have that on the screen as well. Andrew, that'd be great, thank you. Not great, that's fine. Okay, I'll read it, that's fine. Um, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world, or people of the world, is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That idea of uh, avoiding that bad company as it corrupts good character. Get those good influences around you. Get that good character around you. Don't be a friend of the world, it says here. Or you're going to be an enemy of God. They are opposites of each other. That worldly thinking, those worldly activities. I remember when I went to, came to university here in Lancaster, um, the main people that I knew were my course mates, were my housemates, who were non-Christians. I spent a lot of time with them. Um, I went clubbing, had a bit of alcohol, um, had the kind of go out with them. I, I didn't get drunk or anything like that, so I was like, well, I'm doing all right. But actually, I was flirting dangerously with the world. Really, I was, I was getting those bad influences around me, which is really dangerous. And this, this verse, the first thing it says is, don't become adulterers. That kind of like cheating on God almost with the world. You see, the more time I spent with my Christian brothers in Christ in, in this church, the more I became like them, the more Christ-like I became, rather than being like my housemates, my course mates, who were very worldly, uh, in, in a sense. Because we can't please, the, we can't please both God and the world. They are, they are complete opposites of one another and then this issue of, of choosing wisely J.D. Greer the American preacher he says you show me your friends I'll show you your future you show me your friends I'll show you your future you see those who we are truly friends with like I said we're going to become like each other so choose wisely it won't, only takes one bad one to corrupt um, the group or the group of friends now, many films we, we see in our cinemas today show us a lot of romantic relationships, not much about friendship. But there's one series that shows a lot about friendship. I don't know if you can guess it, but Lord of the Rings. And I'm going to show a short clip here that's probably been shown in like a million sermons. It's just a great clip. So we're going to watch that now. Thanks, Andrew. Great clip there of, of the friend Sam carrying Frodo to, to fulfil his mission when he couldn't do it on his own. And I'm going to come back to that a bit later on as well. But they're the kind of friends... Uh, that we want but even more than this as I'm going to go into as well in my next couple of points you see Tim Keller another American speaker says a friend always lets you in and never lets you down they won't let you down with a true uh, friend or certainly not on purpose and we can be really thankful that the Bible does give us this guidance the Bible gives us this wisdom about how to choose wisely how to choose a friend wisely and what to avoid you might be asking then well can I be a true friend as the Bible defines it with, a, with, a, with someone who's not a Christian 
because we, we, you know, we do have friends who, who, are, who are not Christians, and that's, and that's fantastic. But in the way that the Bible describes it, which I'm going to go into soon, I, I would say it's, it's hard to, and potentially we're more likely to be more hurt, or particularly to be badly influenced. Like I certainly was when I came to, to university. Maybe this morning, some of those things that I've mentioned about what to avoid in a friend, maybe that's been you at times. It's probably been me at times, certainly. Maybe you've been someone who's maybe let someone down or maybe gossiped about someone. Maybe been quite easily hot-tempered. Maybe too friendly with the world. Or maybe it's time to make a change to be a a better God-intended friend. And when we're choosing a friend, we need to avoid those who, who are not wise. We need to avoid those who leave us at a sign of trouble, who speak evil against us or judge us, and who are too ang- uh, just angry all the time, or are too friendly with the world. So firstly, we must choose wisely. So number one, choose wisely. Secondly, we need to communicate honestly. Let's read Proverbs 27 uh, together. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, profuse are the kisses of an enemy. The idea that friends can give us wounds. You might think, a friend give me a a, a wound? What I mean is, in our life, I'm sure, um, like me, we're not perfect at all. There are times where we we aren't acting Christ-like. We're maybe in a place where we're hurting others or hurting ourselves. And it takes a true friend to point those things out in our lives to be completely honest and open with us. Because it says there, if it's hidden love, basically, if a friend, supposed friend, sees something in your life that's causing damage and destruction, but they're just kind of not willing to tell you about it, not willing to help you, then that's useless to you. They're just basically letting you come to harm, or those around you come to harm. We've all got blind spots. We all need help to see those things in our life where we're going wrong, we're going astray, where we're bringing harm. Proverbs 27, later on in verse 17, says a very famous verse, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens uh, another. The idea of making each other better, challenging each other through discussion, through spending time together uh, as friends and the idea that they're both iron is that they bring equal um, to the kind of conversation to the friendship that equal weighting um, equal value in helping each other you see we can have mentors which is great someone who's further on in the faith someone who's maybe a bit older uh, and they can be two way too but mainly a mentor is someone who's speaking more into someone who's younger or younger in the faith but a friendship should be equal weighting bringing equal learning to each other, sharpening each other. They are an iron and iron equal with each other. The best example we, we, we hopefully see um, of being honest and open and communicating well in friendships is friendship in a marriage. You know, when, when a marriage works best is when there is a, an open and an honest friendship. And even that ability to, to, to give those, those wounds Although sometimes they're easier coming from another friend than, than your spouse. I'm sure we've all been there. But it really matters to communicate honestly and to communicate openly. I wonder if you've ever opened up uh, and, and been honest with someone, really kind of poured out your heart, and then someone's kind of betrayed your trust and let you down. I've had that and, and it really hurts. Maybe that's put you off from having close friends, letting anyone close to you. Or maybe even further that, maybe you've betrayed someone's trust that they've put in you and lost a friend because of it. I guess as friends, it's a case of do to others as you want them to do to, do, do to you, as the Bible says. You know, if, if you don't want someone to share what you've shared with them, well, don't share their things. Me and uh, Dan and Johnny and, and Josh used to meet uh, as friends just to kind of be really honest and open with each other, to challenge each other. Uh, to disciple one another as, you know, as equals. But I would never share anything of what they'd shared with me. And I hope they didn't about me. I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> I don't think they did. Um, unless I'd said, to, I'd said, oh, can I tell my wife Amy that just so we can pray for you? But mainly none of those things were shared. There was that trust there. But therefore, there's then the ability to be open 
to be honest, to communicate honestly, and it, which had a huge benefit for us all. The greatest friend of all is God, who we can always be honest, we can always be open with, and you can be sure uh, that he will never betray you, he will never let you down. So one part of being a true friend as God intended uh, is to find someone who you can completely be honest and open with and who can be completely honest and open with you. So secondly, we must communicate honestly. So we've got choose wisely, communicate honestly, and then thirdly, love faithfully. Let's have John uh, 15 on the screen, please, Andrew. Verses 12 to 15. Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So the challenge we're given here is to, to, to love each other with Christ's love. What a difficult challenge uh, and example we have there. You know, we, like I said, we are friends of God. We are friends of Jesus because he's told us everything that his father has told him. And in the Old Testament, only Abraham and Moses are actually called kind of friends of God. But once Jesus died and rose again, that was extended to all obedient believers that we can have a close, intimate relationship with our Creator, with Jesus as friends. Now, you're, not, you're likely not to be asked to die for your friends, as obviously Jesus uh, did. But as the, the Amplified Version puts the end of verse 12 there, we are to unselfishly seek the best for one another. Unselfishly seek the best for one another. Listening to them, helping them, encouraging your friends, giving your time to them. Romans 12 talks about outdoing one another with honour, trying to almost, it's almost like a good competition to, to do good for each other over and over. Having a high uh, devotion, a high commitment to one another as, as friends. You know, like Josh said last week, we're all bearing God's image. We're all created in his image. We all deserve to be treated uh, as such and shown at high honour, and we should do that for our friends. Proverbs 17 talks about how a friend uh, loves at all times and a brother's born for adversity. That idea that a friend is there all the time, no matter what the situation. Yeah, family might come and be around. Hopefully they'll always be around. But sometimes family can just be around by obligation almost. But a friend is there because they want to be there. They want to care for you. They want to help you in your time of need or whenever. Galatians 6 as well talks about bearing one another's burdens carrying each other's burdens upon yourself, almost as an imitation of Christ, sharing what someone's going through. And then Colossians 3, 12 to 14, if we've got that one, uh, Andrew, super, thank you. It says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another. And if, if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you so you also must forgive and above all these put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony so we are to have compassionate hearts to be kind to be humble to be meek to be patient to bear with one another to forgive as we have been forgiven and above all uh, to love the Amplified Version says, wrap yourselves in unselfish love. And to me, that gives the idea of kind of all those things we, we try to be ourselves and love kind of holds them all in. Without love, we are not able to be kind, to be meek, to be humble, to be patient, to be forgiving. And then lastly, to love faithfully, 1 Thessalonians 5, to encourage one another, to build each other up. Encourage your friends. Build up your friends. Build up your brothers and sisters in Christ too. But particularly those who are our friends. You know, when something's gone wrong or when you've gone through a really tough time, who's been there for you? Who's been right there going above and beyond for you? That's the kind of friend you want. 
Who's the one who's encouraged you when you've just been feeling so down and discouraged in yourself? Who's been there to encourage you, to build you up, to lift you up? Because that's the kind of friend you want. Friends are the people who love faithfully. They're the people you want in your lives. And maybe you've not done that, you've not been doing that as a friend. Maybe there's an area that I've just mentioned here that you could do better as a friend too. Maybe you're sat there thinking, well, do you know what? I find it hard to let people support me. I'm, I'm quite strong on my own. I want to look strong. I want to look like I'm, I'm okay. I don't need anyone else. Or maybe it's like, it's, oh, I don't want to look weak to, to people. Well, that, that's, not what, that's not what true friendship is. You're not going to have true friendship if you're not willing to, to let others to help you at times. We all need help sometimes, no matter how strong you feel. We all need help at, at times. We all need others. Just like Frodo there, he was trying to do it all on his own to get up that mountain to fulfil his mission. Uh, he was at a point where he needed a friend. He needed Sam to literally carry him up the mountain. See, Jesus was and he is uh, a friend who faithfully loves us and, and so is our Father God. But also God places people in our lives uh, as, as friends for us True friends who want to love you to show you care. So let them, let them support you. Don't push them away, don't shut them out. So you, so you, you don't want to lose them. So as well as communicating honestly with, with friends and to be a true friend, communicating honestly. The second part of being a true friend as God intended uh, is to love faithfully. Being there for them when they fall, listening to them, praying for them, you know, we're all really good at saying if we hear a prayer request, maybe it's on Facebook, I'm praying for you and I really hope we do pray for each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm sure you do. But what a friend would do, would ring them up, pray for them right there and then. I would go around to their house and pray for them. That's what, what a friend uh, would do. Also to love faithfully, it's being willing to point out those areas in each other's lives that are difficult and to support them through making a change to be more Christ-like. And to love no matter what. Selfishly putting your friend first. So third and finally, we must love faithfully. Let's have the band up as I just come to a close. If you guys could play quietly, that'd be awesome. So this morning, we need to choose wisely. We need to have the wisdom as to who to choose to be friends with. And for us to be the kind of friends that people want to be friends with. We need to communicate honestly, being honest and open, being willing to be vulnerable. You know, you only get out what you put in. We need to love faithfully, being selfless, being there no matter what, building each other up. Now, I'm certainly not perfect at these at all, but I'm trying to be better at these things. I want to be better at these things for the benefit of my friends and also my brothers and sisters in Christ. And we need to seek and desire to be uh, these things too. Just a reminder of what J.D. Greer said. He said, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You see, if we choose wisely, what you're going to see in your life is that you're going to grow in your faith in Christ. You're going to become more Christ-like. You're going to have friends who are there for you, who are not fake with you, who are honest with you, and will put you above themselves. And I'd like to suggest as well this morning that it's, it's not actually possible to be this close and true biblical friendship with lots of people. You now we all have brothers and sisters in Christ who we share life with and we can be close with, which is fantastic. But I, I, I truly believe by this definition, it's only possible to really have a few close, true uh, friends by biblical definition. You can, really, you can really bear your soul to and be there for in the middle of the night if they need you. You can't do that for... 50 whatever people or a thousand Facebook friends and look at Jesus he had three really close friends that he had an intimate relationship with Peter James and John they knew everything about him they went to everything think about the transfiguration he only took those three they were the ones he was closest and most intimate with shared life with then there's the 12 he, who Jesus was still very close with but not as quite on an as intimate a level and then there's the, the 72 that Jesus sends out who served Jesus uh, and served with him. But they weren't as close to Jesus, but they did 
uh, life with him. They followed him around to learn from him as brothers and sisters in Christ. So we're called to be friendly with all, but and to show Christ's love to brothers and sisters in Christ, but to have a few close, true friends. But the most amazing friend that we have, though, is Jesus. It is God. We're supposed to have fellowship with and to walk with God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, as our friend. The great hymn that we're going to sing uh, in a moment is, What a Friend Do We Have in Jesus? I can just see Andrew and Val just pump their fists. Yes, we will sing it. Um, it is a fantastic hymn. And particularly verse 1 and verse 4, I'm just going to read out the lyrics uh, of that. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, and what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Verse 4. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I love that first line of verse 4. Cannot find a friend so faithful as Jesus. There's no one. So to find true friendship, we first need to be friends with Jesus. And if you're not friends with Jesus this morning, maybe you're here, maybe you're watching online, well, come and have a chat with me or with Jamie or... Andrew, after the service, our messages as a church, we'd love to tell you how you can do that. Because if you see, when we're friends with Jesus, we can then be a good, true, biblical, in, God-intended friend uh, to others. If our friendship is good with Jesus, our friendship will be good with others too. We need to not seek to be a friend as the world sees it, but be a friend uh, as God intended it to be. As our, as our friendship with God should be. Being open and honest with him, loving him no matter what, going to him in every situation, enjoy being with him. Want to not sin against or hurt him. That's what our friendship with God should look like, but it's also what our friendship should look like with one another. This is the kind of friendship that is true friendship as God intended. And it's hard at times though, it's difficult guys, we're not gonna be perfect at it, at all, but that's what we should be aiming for. And it, but it is possible by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. And let's face it, the more of this that we have in the church, the more that the, the church, its people, the body of Christ, are going to be built up, supported, encouraged, and able to serve God more faithfully. And that will benefit the kingdom of God. So if you want to be a successful as a friend, a true friend by God's standard, then we must, you must, choose wisely, communicate honestly, and love faithfully. Let's pray together. Oh Lord God, we thank you so much that we have a friend in you, that you are the true example of what friendship looks like. Uh, and God, although we are not perfect at being this, the friend by your standard and the standard that you set in your scripture, in your word, we ask for your help by the Holy Spirit to be a better true friend, to be able to be honest, to be able to be open, and to be able to love above and beyond selflessly, love faithfully in our lives. Lord, help us, we ask, by your spirit. just as we come into a, a time of worship, I, I just feel that maybe there's, there's someone here or maybe some people here or online who are just longing for that person or uh, a couple of people who they can actually be really honest and open with and can have a, almost a true friend. And they're longing for that, maybe feeling lonely, maybe desperate for someone to just journey alongside them in this way. And if that's you this morning, can I... Can I ask you to, to, to be brave uh, and to come and to maybe chat to me or to Jamie or to Andrew either uh, now during the worship or at the end and we'd love just to pray with you and maybe we can even think of someone who could be really good for you to, to pair up with or to be in a three with who can really help you in this way where you can be honest with them and can support you as a friend.
don't leave from this place or turn off the broadcast if that's you this morning without um, chatting to us. And if there's anything else that you just want prayer for this morning, uh, ju- just, just come forward. Uh, I'll be here at the side and Jamie is too and I'm sure Andrew can come if there's more people. But if there's anything, uh, maybe you've got a difficult friendship right now you really need wisdom in. Maybe you're longing for a greater friendship with someone that you just don't have, like I said there. Or maybe there's some other issue you have with a, a friendship or just it's a desire of your heart. Then come speak to me, come speak to Jamie, come speak to Andrew. Let us pray for you this morning.